a collaborative reading of Twisted by Miranda Leek. Excerpt 1! Rodney, you're a wizard at roller coaster. Rodney, we are from a different world. We are not human. What the hell are you talking about? I replied, realizing that the old engineer had gotten on a new, old new level of weird. Listen, there is a place that coexists within an amusement park. It is known as Amusement Park Between, where the rides have control, where the impossible becomes possible, and the explainable becomes unexplainable. Woody replied, disgusted, his ice-like eyes suddenly getting darker. Is this for real, Woody? First of all, it's not Woody. It's Thunderbuck. He said as he stood there, stone still, while he barely breathed. He then dipped his head low, letting his long hair drape over his shoulders. The coaster engineer simply stared down, his eyes growing darker still. <laughs> Okay, if that's your real name, then don't I have some freaky name if I'm from where you are? I said, letting out a soft laugh. Don't mock our names, they are warrior names. Woody said crudely. Your real name, Rodney, is Rail Runner. This is very dumb and confusing! I replied sarcastically in defense. Now a roller coaster has powers beyond humans' understanding. We can bend lightning and fire, possess super strength and agility. We can predict when things will happen, except death, and sense trouble. We can never get sick. Oh! So that's why I never got drunk on all those beards! I said, chuckling a little. Yes. As I was saying, we are venomous. We can hear a sound from miles. We can have the sight of a dragon, and other things. A roller coaster gains power from amusement parks and carnivals. You also gain power from rides, and you can have the ability to control them, like their speed and how long they last. If you step on the rails or in a roller coaster car, you go roller coaster instantly. Excerpt 2, in which Rodney is a self-absorbed, whiny shit. Railrunner, our love is forbidden. We can't carry on any longer. A roller coaster cannot be in love with a human. Claire, please, I said, coming to my knees. Why, why does it have to be this way? I said in sheer frustration. Why me? Why God? Why? I said, trying to hold back my anger. I am a monster! I almost killed her! She tried to kill me! I have a roller coaster blood! We can never be together! Never ever again! Not Rodney! Rail Runner! Rail Runner did this! I yelled, breaking the mirror with my fist. I fell backward against the tub. <laughs> what did I do to deserve such a thing? Why is it me that has to carry this burden upon my chest? Excerpt 3, in which Ronnie is a melodramatic, psychopathic murderer. Rail Runner looked at the sky. The moon had shown his face once again. His eyes turned into that of which they were. His eyes turned into that of which they were. I'm not the guy that you would want to mess with, especially not at this hour, I said, almost reliving them all that instant over. The altered love the nightlight. The man sneered, using his gang name. Ah. Twisted do too. I live for the night and the presence of the moon. I said, almost laughing again. 
You're going to see just as the moon rises. You will witness my true power and the monster that I really am. My disguise will be uncovered, and you will see the error of your ways. My god! You are the monster! The roller coaster! Uh, Railrunner, please, spare me! The leader cowered. Gentlemen, you just got on my bad side! He said as his teeth became thongs. Boy, I'm tired of you people being arrogant! Railrunner spoke with a crazed look in his eye. If you can't accept me, I can't accept you! I shouted in rage. I gathered my strength and jumped through the roof, landing in front of the brigade, greeting them with a mighty roar. He then lunged forward and snapped the man's neck, killing him instantly. Red Runner turned and roared at the dead man's followers. They stood in fear as he revealed his claws. They ran at Red Runner. But he was quicker. His claws sunk through the human's flesh and spilled human blood. Claire watched in fear as Real Runner one by one slaughtered the men as he was on his genocide. What? What are you? I have many names, but most call me a monster. I hissed as I slammed the pest against the wall. He hung there helplessly a few inches from the ground. The man opened his mouth to utter a few more words. I'm ask again. I want better answers. What are you? He demanded. I told you before, a human rises with the sun, but I rise with the moon. I am a mere immortal soul that feasts on your fears and flesh. <laughs> Excerpt 4 In which Detective Black determinedly battles on despite the odds. Suddenly, Detective Black jumped in front of Claire. He held a rifle aimed at Real Runner, and then he let loose the gun's power. Claire ran for her life while Black was firing. Real Runner landed in front of him and raised his claws and nailed the detective, sending him crashing through the tent. Real Runner let loose a roar as he leapt onto the top of the 50 foot lift hill. Real Runner! sniffed the air and snorted in disgust. He had lost the carousel horse. He stood along among the empty buildings. Suddenly a new scent worked its way into his nostrils. Detective Black quietly snuck up behind him, a large machete in his hand. He raised it toward the rail runner's back and prepared to stab him, but to his dismay, the, the coaster turned around and clashed the machete in his wheels. His wheels! He roared in his face and hit him with a heavy blow, knocking the detective out cold. Excerpt 5 In which gigantic flies are told about amusement park between... My eyes were still transfixed on the scenery around me. Amusement Park Between looked like a place from the most imaginative mind. It was so beautiful and mysterious at the same time. This place looked like a painting from a talented artist. It was completely different than I had imagined it. Thunderbark! I said, walking up to him. Why is Amusement Park Between... like... Forest. You ask a great deal of questions, Rail Runner. But amusement park between is like this because we love clean air and a non-polluted land. However, we have technology that is far more advanced than any humans, with the perks of being good to the environment. Excerpt six, in which Thunderbark's house is guarded by magical racist. Spiders. You could say I have a really good security system, he said, as he pulled out one of the biggest spiders I have ever seen. <laughs> These spiders are harmless to rides like us. 
You see, when they catch a fallen scent, they'll come running. If they bite a fallen, he or she dies within an hour. Cool! Static said, edging in for a closer look. How far can they smell a fallen? Merry Legs asked, becoming less fearful. From about fifty yards. But it is enough to scare them out of their wits. <laughs> Thunderbark laughed as he returned the spider. If you said that only a roller coaster could kill a roller coaster, what effect do these spiders have on them? Good question. It can only paralyze one for three days. 